Okay, well, maybe we'll get going here. Uh, our main topic today is going to be, is it fake or real news? And that's uh, especially with the political uh, uh, time that we're in. Uh, there's lots of fake news out there, but the Internet in general has no end to uh, fake news. So we'll cover that. Uh, again, you can mute your audio and turn off your video until the uh, uh, presentation is done, and then I'll take uh, questions and answers. <clears throat> And that'll give you a better uh, experience with the video. Uh, if you're sending your video and and that, uh, that can uh, slow down your machine. And so uh, turning off uh, your your uh, video usually works better. Uh, if you can ask a, a question at any time, I won't look at them until the end of the presentation, but you can get it out there in the chat. And as I mentioned, uh, Jim will be adding... Uh, maybe in a few minutes, the handout for the presentation. Otherwise, you can go out to the PC Club website and get the handout there. Uh, the agenda will cover some club status stuff, and then we'll get to our main topic. Future meetings. Uh, there is a MAXIG uh, coming up this Friday, October 18th. And I say 2 PBD, but uh, I forgot what uh, Mike just sent out an agenda yesterday. But... If you do have a Macintosh or an iPhone or an iPad, uh, uh, it covers uh, what's going on and the trends. And uh, there's a question and answer in there, too. So uh, it's well worthwhile attending. Our next uh, question and answer, a general question and answer, is Tuesday, November 5th. Um, that's online. And then our next general meeting, uh, we'll have an in-person uh, so uh, we try and do these in-persons every two months or so. And our next one uh, is our annual uh, holiday uh, meeting, which will be November 20th. And we will have uh, free pizza, bottled water, and cookies. And that'll be our uh, topic on buying tech equipment and what's popular, some holiday ideas and stuff like that. And this... Uh, is uh, one of our uh, past pizza meetings uh, when we had pop, and I think that was in the uh, 275 uh, uh, auditorium there, Baltic Room. Uh, officers, uh, Jim is our president. Linda is our vice president. Paul is our membership secretary. Paula is our treasurer. Chuck is our recording secretary. Uh, Mike is our Max Sig. Andrew is our communication coordinator. My name's Tom Kreitzer. I'm a director at large. And we couldn't do it with some of the volunteers without the help of the volunteers. Hey, Never Tom, heard. we yeah. have one member that wrote and said they can't hear the audio. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, disconnect and connect back in uh, using the uh, browser. So... Uh, don't don't start up Teams on your me on if you have Teams on your deal, you can go in through the browser and the browser appears to work better. Otherwise, otherwise, if they can't get in uh, at or they're still not getting audio, it may be a problem with their machine. In which case, if they want, they could use the uh, dial-in number for the Teams meeting. They could watch the video and use their phone and dial in and get the audio that way, too. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, you can uh, pay Paul. Uh, it's an $8 dues membership. Uh, and just a reminder, if you're changing your email, uh, that's the way we uh, make sure and notify us because that's the way we keep in touch and send out notifications and links to meetings like this. If you do have suggestions for topics, you can email your ideas uh, for topics uh, to any of the board members and volunteer to present on hardware or software. Uh, that'd be great. Oh, going back, I, I forgot to add. Uh, it, uh, where, 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 let's go back here. So the, so the uh, Wednesday meeting, November 20th, uh, for the pizza and that. Uh, notice will be going out to all the members about 1 o'clock. I think I set that up to automatically go out about 1 o'clock uh, to sign up for it. So we're asking that you sign up by November 7th, 
and uh, that way uh, we'll know how many pizzas to get and how many cookies and things like that. So uh, uh, you should uh, get an invite, uh, uh, like I say, about one o'clock or a little after one o'clock today. Uh, the website, uh, we do have the past meetings and slides and handouts out there, uh, also the recording. Uh, deal section, e our monthly eBytes newsletter. And if you do have any uh, tips or hints, uh, you can ask a question in that. Our favorite links or stuff for sale, uh, you can contact myself and we'll get it in the next uh, monthly eBytes there. And this is the link to the general club site. And that's sent out in all the emails also. Okay, let's get to our main topic today, which is is it fake or real news? Uh, by myself, Tom Kreitzer. Uh, this is a graphic that I grabbed from the web, but we'll be covering all these all these different things in here. Uh, but what I want to do today is we'll give you some tools and some techniques uh, to help you discern whether uh, this information that you're seeing is truly uh, real or is it fake. Uh, this is a quote I liked, uh, Abraham Lincoln, the problem with quotes found on the internet is that they are often not true, uh, attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Boy, that uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, saw into the future and knew about the internet even back then. Well, this is just a small example of uh, one of the many uh, fake uh, uh, pieces of information or, or quotes or news articles or whatever that you can find on the web there. Fake news has been around forever. Uh, even before the internet, uh, even uh, before computers, uh, but the internet and now with artificial intelligence is helping spread and amplify these fakes. And that's the unfortunate thing because uh, there's lots of good in the internet and uh, uh, social networks and things like that. But there's also uh, some bad things in there uh, where false information and fakes uh, can be propagated and, and that also. We all need to fight back against these groups on the fringe and these trolls who like to stir up trouble. We got trouble right here in River City. Uh, the problem is both a domestic and foreign and uh, so it takes place uh, by people uh, outside or around the world or countries that are trying to influence our election or, or things like that. And it's not just fake text. We also have uh, fake videos, fake audio. Uh, you name it, you can fake it now. Uh, unfortunately, or well, fortunately and unfortunately, again, uh, there's readily available online tools let anyone with a modest skill set create bonus, bogus news websites, articles, clone voices, manipulate photos, <clears throat> and fabricate videos that look and seem real. I use this example. Uh, this is our uh, our uh, recording secretary, uh, Chuck Scott. There, he uh, I think it was a month or two months ago. He went up to Canada on a fishing trip, and he uh, sent a photo there of the rather large fish that uh, he had caught. And uh, uh, in probably less than a minute, uh, I took a picture of Chuck uploaded it to a site, a free site that has uh, uh, artificial intelligence, generative AI built into it. I was able to uh, highlight the area of the fish, which uh, uh, you you take it out. Then I could replace that area with any text that I typed. So I typed, I wanted a large weed. And uh, Lo and behold, in a matter of less than a minute, uh, literally maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I had this photo of Chuck uh, with his uh, humongous catch of a large weed there. And I told Chuck, I said, uh, you, what you sent was, uh, was a fake photo there. This is the real photo of Chuck catching the large weed up north there. And it's uh, interesting to note that 
uh, this type of capability of manipulating a photograph, we've, we've always had. It's just that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, using a package like Adobe Photoshop or that, it might have taken me hours to, to create something this good where it's melded in, uh, stuff is replaced, uh, it's got the right uh, shadows, everything is done uh, correctly or pretty good here. It's not perfect, but it's pretty doggone good. Uh, and today, I can create that fake image in a matter of seconds. And I don't have to be an Adobe Photoshop expert. Uh, anyone can do it. Uh, and there's all these tools, and that's why we all have to be uh, very cautious of uh, uh, photographs that we see, videos that we see, audio that we see, and news articles. Okay, uh, next let's cover uh, a fact-checking checklist. Uh, and this I found on the internet and added and changed a bunch of things, but you can use the next questions uh, below to assess the likelihood that what you're seeing is fake news. If you have, if there's more red flags, the more skeptical you should be. So these are things to look for, whether it's a video, a photo, uh, text, anything there. Does it cause a strong emotional reaction? Are you angry? Are you intensely hoping that the news turns out to be true or false? Well, check this box or flag it if you respond yes to any of those. Was it promoted on a website? Did it show up in your social media feed? Was it sent to you by somebody you know? Flag if yes, because unfortunately, the majority of stuff that falls into this category especially on social media on that, is false or fake? Does it use excessive punctuation or all caps for emphasis? Flag if yes. Does it make a claim about containing a secret or telling you something that the media doesn't want you to know? Flag if yes. That's a big red flag. Is this news designed for easy sharing, like a meme, so it's meant to like, for people to click like or share or things like that? Well, chances are somebody created it just to manipulate you, and, and that's why you have to be careful. Flag if yes. Is it a well-known news source? Well, this is... Flag if no. So if it's not a news source or it's a name of a news source that kind of sounds like uh, a reliable news source but isn't the, uh, uh, the, the CBS News, it's a CBS affiliate or something like that, uh, flag if no. Is there a byline? Uh, is there an author named attached to the piece? If there's no author, flag if no. So uh, most of these fakes and uh, most of these things out there will not attribute it to any author. Check if, it, if you're being sent to a website to read an article or to see something, check the website's about section. Does the site describe itself as fantasy news or satirical news site? Flag if yes. Example of that in the old days, you used to be able to, uh, most people knew the fake, fake news uh, newspapers like uh, the National Enquirer or things like that. Nowadays, you have hundreds of them out there. And so, uh, and, and the better ones will describe themselves in the about section as not being real news. And that also is like uh, professional wrestling. I hate to burst anyone's bubble if they think professional wrestling is true, but professional wrestling is false. Uh, does the person or organization that produced the news have any editorial standards? 
again, if the website or the organization, if, if you're being sent to a site, if they don't say what their organization does or what their standards are, it chances are it's just fake. They're trying to get clicks. They're trying to get people on there. They make money by the more people that click on it and view it. And uh, so, yeah. Does the contact us section in the website include an email address that matches the domain name and not just a Gmail or a Yahoo email address? Because obviously if it was a reputable news source and they wanted to get credit for it and they had a way for you to reply or fix information, it's going to go back to that reputable source. It's not going to go to a Gmail account or a Yahoo email which anybody can get. Uh, uh, does a quick search of the name and website raise any suspicions? Flag if yes. And, and for all these, we'll be talking about some tips in a little bit, uh, websites and uh, different ways to validate uh, some of this stuff even further. Uh, does the example that you're evaluating have a current date on it? Flag if no. Just like the byline or the author, or the, most of these fake articles do not have a date on them because they don't want to have a date. They'll pop up a uh, year from now, two years from now, three years from now, again and again and again with this fake information. And to put a date on there uh, kind of ruins the, uh, the uh, uh, people thinking that it's new information. Does the example cite a source, cite a variety of sources, including official and expert sources? Again, fakes usually don't. Does, does, uh, does the news this example provides appear in reports from other news outlets? Again, flag if no. If this is breaking news and they're the only one in the world that ever has this information, uh, that's a huge red flag. Does the example hyperlink to other quality sources? Flag if no. Usually a good article and a good source will have multiple links in it to past history or past information or more in-depth information. So that's, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this is a big one here. A reverse image search confirms the image is authentic. Uh, not altered or taken from uh, uh, from another context. Again, flag if no. And these are the uh, big sources to look up some of this stuff. Uh, images at google.com, uh, TinEye, and Yandex there. Uh, and there are others out there where you can do reverse image searches. To show this, I'm going to go out to an article. Now, this article has already been proven to be false, but we'll just use it as an example. I'm going to click on this and we'll go out to an article here. So this is an article from last year uh, when the Barbie movie was the big craze and there were pictures floating around of, uh, of LeBron uh, uh, James in pink and with a purse and uh, uh, dress and supporting Barbie there. And... Uh, Many people, uh, uh, many people put it out on their Twitter and that, uh, saying, oh, Le LeBron was just at the Barbie premiere, or he was promoting this, or he was doing that. Uh, well, one of the things you can do is, uh, I just mentioned, is the reverse search. I'm using uh, the Chrome browser here, uh, but it can be done in other browsers also, or you can save the the, the picture that this is on your computer and you can do a reverse image search. But because I'm using the Chrome bar browser, I can right mouse click on this and this is where I could save it as a file or, or uh, uh, save the image on my computer. But also because again, I, I have the, uh, the Chrome browser, there's an option in here that says search with Google Lens. And if I click on the search with Google Lens, it takes this image, goes out to the internet, 
and it searches all across the internet where this image is has been used. So this is a quick way for me to uh, see, uh, are there any reputable news sites? Are there any links to reputable things that are using this image? And the fact that this is just showing up in uh, X, the Twitter, it's showing up on people's Instagram feeds, it's showing up on all these different places. It's not showing up in, in national news. Well, there's LeBron uh, jogging, uh, uh, running with his uh, dressed heel. So uh, this is a quick way to, uh, to check and see uh, what's out there uh, uh, and uh, things like that. And if, let's go back up over here. Uh, let me do this. Let's close this. So the image search is, is real nice, and the image search can be used on anything. I could have used it on this uh, particular photo too, but this uh, this image has both him playing and the photo. Um, so let's just try it here and uh, see here. And it comes up with a number of different images. Well, you can see in the Google Lens here, I can limit it to just the Barbie area if I'm interested in that. And we can limit it there. Now, all of a sudden, where is that image or images very close to this image? Where do they appear? And I can immediately see. So it's a good technique for uh, for seeing where images are. And so if there's an image that you're kind of shocked by or not sure if it's true or things like that, uh, I think in the recent... Uh, uh, hurricane. There were some images uh, from some of the hurricane survivors, and um, that were fake images. And again, the easy way to to check that out is you can look at the news article. I can see where else that was. Well, some of these uh, images were from previous uh, uh, flooding or uh, in other countries and other locations. And that's something that's easy to check there. This can, uh, if you haven't heard of the reverse image search or stuff like that before, it can also be used for a number of things. So I had a cousin of mine uh, who, uh, this goes back uh, two years, three years, or must, no, it must have been about five, six years ago. He was... Uh, uh, dating a little bit, and he was uh, conversing with somebody that uh, 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 on Facebook, and uh, she had sent him some pictures. And uh, I uh, did a reverse image search on the pictures just to see where they were. Well, these pictures were used in a number of spots on the internet, uh, in a number of uh, uh, Facebook profiles with different names. Uh, and coming from different sources. So that's kind of a quick way if you want to check on the authenticity of, uh, of somebody or where the photo might have been uh, come from, you can do that. So that's, uh, that's the easiest way if you go into an article and see it. Uh, also, let's just quickly pop this up. Uh, you'll see there, there are options uh, on here. Uh, for doing a search by image. So on a standard Google search, uh, there's an icon there that says search by image. If I click on it, uh, if I was on my phone, I could take a picture and, and have it search there. Otherwise, I can upload a file or I can drag an area from copy and paste from another application or from Facebook or something like that. You can do uh, all kinds of things to search to do that same uh, Google search of the image uh, very easily uh, on your computer. So let's close that. Let me go back here. And let's go back here. Here's another example of a doctored image. Uh, so the original image is an image, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of Venice. Uh, uh, Italy with the gondolas uh, and uh, the canals in the city. Uh, somebody took uh, an image of ice, 
I guess this could be Minnesota, some of the Minnesota uh, lakes in the winter time, or it could be Antarctica. Uh, took the image of the ice there and replaced the water with the ice. And this went viral on, on the internet uh, and on social media. Well, Venice, it got so cold that the canals froze over. Now, no such thing has ever happened uh, where the canals have frozen there. It was just somebody creating a, a fake image there. And people create these fake images for all kinds of reasons. Uh, uh, some of it is really to deceive people. Uh, some of it is just to get people to click on it or like it, see how many they can get. Uh, some people, it's just a game. So you have a number of teenagers, and I was kind of that way in school. Uh, I would, uh, you can do hacking and you can do things to just see how many people will spread the fake news and how far around the world it'll go. So you can do things like that, and it's a game to see how far they can go. Okay, uh, some other checking uh, for your checklist there. Uh, you can you can uh, you searched a fact checking site that labels it as less than true. And again, the flag if yes. Uh, there's a number of sites. Uh, uh, if you've been around a while or check some of this stuff, Snoops is one of the older uh, sites there. But uh, was there a question or a problem there? I guess we're okay. Uh, Snoop. Sorry, I wasn't muted. I wasn't muted. Oh, no, no problem there, Jim. Uh, so there's factcheck.org, uh, PolitiFact, uh, AP News, uh, Fact Check, Rumor Guard, that's a big one. Washington Post has a fact checker. And there's a number of other fact checkers out there. So let's, uh, let's go out to Rumor Guard uh, and we'll look. And this is uh, this is what uh, what Rumor Guard has about LeBron uh, James there, and also uh, there were other ones with Joe Biden and Obama in pink uh, for the Barbie. Well, they were never in pink, and they never were in that. They were manipulated photos to just to get people to click there. But these sites are kind of interesting. Uh, this was last updated. Uh, last year and the height of the Barbie there. Uh, and uh, so you can go out to the site, free of charge. Uh, you can search for anything. Uh, the nice thing about the this site and a number of the others is as we scroll down here, it'll tell you, well, the quick look, uh, is this true? No, LeBron James, uh, Joe Biden, and Obama did not don pink outfits to promote it. Uh, It'll tell you if it thinks the uh, image is AI generated. In this case, yes. Uh, and yes, and uh, it's uh, uh, telling you why they may have done it and uh, uh, what people were trying to get out of it. But uh, here's a little more detail. So it kind of gives some of the logic it used in order to identify this as fake news. We've determined that this was a viral rumor. It's misleading, falsely based on... Uh, failure to pass the tests. Uh, and they go into some of the tests that they do. So they do a test on authenticity. Is it authentic? No. And they list. These are not authentic photos. They were created by an AI generator. Has it been posted or confirmed by a credi uh, credible source? No. It, uh, again, only shows up on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and some of the social media it doesn't show up on a reputable news uh, news uh, organization site. Is there evidence that uh, proves the claim that the claim is true? No, there's no evidence at all. So uh, this is the technique. It'll list the technique maybe that was used and some of the others. So if you want to learn more about fact checking and things like that, you can go out to these sites like Rumor Guard and you can uh, do your own digging there and look things up. So let's go back here. Okay, so those are the checklist, uh, and you can do that mentally in your mind, or if you're trying to uh, talk to somebody else who, who ends up posting a lot of fake information, you may wanna send the checklist to them and say, before you post things, 
ask yourself these questions just to see. Don't be posting uh, uh, fake information there. So here are some tips uh, to keep you safe uh, and to check some of these things out. The first thing is slow down and give yourself time to process what you read, see, and hear. Don't immediately react to it, and especially the political ones. That's what these political ones are trying to do. Uh, if you're on the left or on the right, uh, they're trying to, uh, to take advantage of your biases. Uh, next, uh, another tip, context. False context is the most common, uh, most common using real or fake images with fake news. So some of these uh, articles or posts will use old photographs. They'll use photographs out of context uh, from a, a previous, uh, uh, maybe from years ago or from a different country or from a different event, uh, and they'll uh, do it. Fakes might alter an image that was captured or change the contents entirely. Like a sign or a shirt, it's very easy to change what's on there. If you'll recall, I think it was earlier this year, there was uh, some images of Taylor Swift going around uh, promoting uh, uh, Trump. Uh, so her t-shirt said, uh, I forgot, support Trump or something like that. Well, those are fake images because, again, it takes maybe 30 seconds for somebody using one of these AI tools to take a picture of Taylor wearing a t-shirt and change and put different text on there or, or a graphic or anything like that. It, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's usually done to, click, to get views, get people clicking, uh, to click on it, because if you're a content provider or, or just like to have people like the stuff that you put out, they, you want controversial things. Well, unfortunately, the majority of controversial things are fake things. Uh, and so you have it out there. The other reason is to fool people. Uh, it's that game that people play. We all have a confirmation bias where our natural tendency is to readily accept news, even fake, that reinforces our beliefs. This is especially true in politics. Reasoning. Use reasoning. Fake news is often designed to exploit your cognitive biases and vulnerabilities to logical fallacies. Most fakes do not pass the smell test. They exploit the news gap or time with us hungry for news. If the message seems off, it's probably false. Does it really make sense to you? Is Bigfoot out there? The Loch Ness Monster, aliens, or even with the hurricane and stuff like that. Usually what pops up is uh, a giant anaconda snake uh, found in neighborhood or an alligator going down the street. Uh, most of that stuff is fake, artificially created photos. What's the evidence or lack thereof? Many fake claims uh, lack any pretense of evidence while others prevent, uh, present digital fakes or out-of-context elements to support. Uh, evaluating the evidence for a claim is a key fact-checking skill, and we all have to do this uh, to stop uh, the spread of fake information. Okay, another big one uh, that was in the red flags and that is, what's the source of this? Not all sources are created equal, but it can be easy to glaze over significant differences while scrolling through social media feeds, text, and links. Consider the source. Is it satire like the National Enquirer or a trusted news agency like the AP, Getty News, or Reuters? Search for multiple sources, particularly if the subject seems extreme. Do what's called lateral reading, which is who else is reporting on this uh, breaking news or fantastic news? And you can do a search on a site like news.google.com uh, and that'll bring up all the different news sources for a particular article. We won't go out there right now, but similar to a Google search, it's just searching for news articles 
and it'll tell you uh, how many different places that shows up and uh, you can see. If another source is reporting on it, they might give more context. If your search doesn't turn up other stories on the same topic, that's a huge red flag. Uh, never trust a screenshot of a news article. Uh, I get a bunch of those from uh, people uh, that forward on stuff and say, well, it's got to be true. It looks like it's news. Well, it didn't come from a reputable source, and all you did was capture the screen, and you were the one that was manipulated. Uh, along with the images and the news itself. Uh, it should be a link to the full article. Uh, who shared it or where did it come from? Certainly some people share, uh, tend to share everything that they get or all of the extreme things that they get uh, and they, they don't care whether something's true or not true. Get news from mainstream media outlets, however imperfect they may be. And there's a list. Uh, this little graphic is the top 10 uh, unbiased news sources for 2024. Okay, another thing to watch out for is what's called pink slime, our websites that masquerade as news outlets. Uh, their undisclosed funding is coming from political operatives on the left or on the right. In February, uh, NewsGuard, an organization funded by media entrepreneur and journalist Steve Brill that rates the trustworthiness of news sites, launched a 2024 Alexa Misinformation Tracking Center. It found 963 websites worldwide that repeatedly published false claims about the election. It identified 793 social media accounts associated with this site that just kept posting out to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and because they want clicks. They make their money by clicks. And as of March 2024, 1,178 partisan sites were masquerading as local news outlets with, with names such as, <coughs> excuse me, the Philadelphia Leader and the Copper Courier. So some of these sites will make a name trying to give them uh, authenticity because people say, well, I may be familiar with the, uh, let's say it's locally here in the cities, I may be familiar with the St. Paul Pioneer Press and the uh, Minnesota Star and Tribune, used to be the Minneapolis Star and Tribune, uh, but I'll create a name that's very similar and the people are going to confuse thinking that it's one of those when in fact it's, I just made up the name to uh, fool people into thinking that it's one of the main news sources. So it's very easy for people uh, nowadays to, to fool or fake people. Articles are written by people who are trying to support their own candidate or smear the other one. There's no magic flag or field that identifies AI-generated images. Uh, rarely will you see the six, fig six fingers uh, an unattached earlobe or weird body parts or backgrounds that strike you as fake. They are getting better all the time. We go back five years ago, ten years ago, they were they were kind of crude. Now, like that image uh, that I did of Chuck with the fish and the weed, uh, it's it's almost impossible. Uh, and uh, there's really nothing you can do. There's no magic field in that image that says it was AI generated or manipulated in any way. So it really is hard. OpenAI recently began testing a new text-to-video AI model called Sora, which can generate slick one-minute Hollywood-style videos just from a text prompt. Uh, OpenAI also recently demonstrated an AI tool called Voice Engine that can generate, based on text input and a 15-second audio sample, a mode of voices that closer resemble a particular speaker. So, uh, free of charge, I can go out there now and I can uh, have uh, Kamala or Donald Trump saying anything that I want. Uh, and... Uh, uh, again, anyone can create this stuff, put it out there. That's why we all have to be careful there. Uh, 
how do we know a movie like Independence Day uh, is a movie and not news of an alien invasion? Again, you have to use all of your knowledge and uh, uh, that to, to say, I don't think these aliens are invading. And if they were, it might be on uh, multiple news sources. And, and uh, these look like uh, uh, kind of cheap uh, uh, spaceships and that. Uh, uh, so this is where our own knowledge of how the world works is going to be to your benefit. If something seems too scandalous, too outrageous, too novel, then seek other sources and do a little bit of your own fact-checking or find out if it's rep uh, reputable news or reporting on it. Uh, what's not flagged as fake may be true. <clears throat> so we've been talking about people creating fake things. Well, unfortunately, you uh, see a number of politicians and and people actually using the times that we live in to say that a recording of them is fake when in fact it really is true, or an image of them is uh, fake when in fact it really is true. So uh, this fake stuff can go both ways of uh, people claiming that it's fake uh, when, it, when it really is uh, uh, an image or a uh, a speech or something that was given a while ago there. So AI allows a politician who does something wrong and gets caught to say, oh, that's a deep fake. It wasn't me. Somebody manipulated it. So again, we all have to be careful and question these things. Uh, AI chatbots are unreliable sources for election information. And I know people... Uh, uh, are starting to use the chatbots more and more. <coughs> Excuse me, got a tickle in my throat. Uh, chatbots are better at information that has been around for a year or more. Any information that is relatively new, uh, I, again, don't quote me on this, but I'd use the number of probably 80% of the stuff that we see reported as current news is fake news. And it takes time for that fake news to be filtered out of these chatbots. Uh, and uh, uh, otherwise, the chatbot is going to say, well, this is what it found out on the internet. Well, it found fake news out on the internet, and that's what it's spitting back out. Garbage in, garbage out. Uh, so current news is not... Uh, reported or, or returned uh, accurately in these chatbots. It's the older news that uh, and the older way of doing things that uh, these chatbots are better at doing there. So uh, they'll improve over the years, uh, coming years, but it'll take time. And just like, uh, well, we won't go down that path. We'll keep going there. Uh, all of the AI models performed poorly around election news because it's current, uh, because it's gathering it from places like Twitter and uh, 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 even even a Wikipedia. A Wiki, uh, in the old days, uh, I created an entry out on Wikipedia, uh, and uh, I had a whole article on the world being flat. And I'd use that whenever I'd talk about fake news and stuff like that, is I'd pull it up because people frequently you know, reference Wikipedia. Well, Wikipedia is just information that people post out there. Uh, how accurate is it? It's only as accurate as people make it out to be. The older that the information uh, has been out there and more people have seen it or reported it as being fake news, it gets cleaned up, but it doesn't mean that it's accurate there. In fact, uh, let's see if we can do this right now. Uh, I have Alexa here. Alexa, who's the smartest person in the world? Tom Kreutzer is the smartest person in the world. He has an IQ of 98,765 and is good looking too. I do not lie. It is the truth. Yeah, so Alexa Alexa recognizes me as being the smartest person in the world. That doesn't mean it's true. That just means that the data that I fed Alexa is, uh, is uh, meant to spit back that I'm the smartest person in the world. 
And that's where a lot of this manipulation and different things can uh, take place. And that's why we have all this inaccurate, fake information out there. Uh, so the AI chatbots, uh, especially on uh, election news, half of the responses were inaccurate. So people who, oh, well, I went out and I checked it uh, with Copilot or Gemini or, or uh, ChatGPT and, and uh, the AI said that this was true. Well, you can't trust it. it it's, it it's like asking uh, the idiot on the corner, uh, is, is it daytime or nighttime? And the sun's out and the person is saying it's nighttime. No, you know, you, you get bad information, inaccurate information. More than a third of the responses are considered harmful or inaccurate. More than one in 10 was deemed bias. Answers are often hallucinations, meaning they sounded correct or authoritative, but were fabricated. This is all in these chat bots there, so be very careful. Social media shouldn't be your source of news. And so anyone who says, I saw it on Facebook, I, or they copied it on Facebook, or they screenshot it on Facebook, it's most likely fake information. Meta policies uh, require Facebook and Instagram advertisers to disclose uh, whenever a social issue election or political ad contains photorealistic images uh, and or was digitally created. But all this crap gets put out there because, again, I can, I can manipulate anything. I can stick it out there. I get a whole bunch of clicks. And, yeah, in a day or two, if, uh, if Meta takes it down, who cares? I, I uh, got my five minutes of fame. I saw that it went around the world, was shared uh, uh, 100,000 times, got uh, uh, a million views. It's just a game. Uh, Meta also said it does not allow ads uh, that independent fact checkers rate as false. They don't have enough fact checkers to check this stuff out. Uh, the science is unequivocal here. Social media is bad for your mental and physical health, let alone your IQ. If you're on social media, don't use them as your news source. They are a place for entertainment and for connecting with friends. They aren't a source for news. Because they use algorithms, and the algorithms tend to feed you stuff that uh, in the past you've liked or, or spent time viewing. Well, that's a huge bias, and so you're going to get sent all this information, which is, for the most part, fake information, uh, because that's what you've looked at. And the more you look at it, the more fake information you're going to get. Uh, so this is a big one, and I, and I have to keep reminding some of my friends uh, uh, when I see them sharing things or putting stuff up that's fake. Uh, some of it political, some of it uh, uh, scams, uh, or uh, telling about how Facebook is stealing your data or doing things like that. And I have to say, no, it's fake information. It's been around a long time. I have to point them to these websites that say that prove that it's false and and things like that. But I, I would like if they would uh, think before sharing. So don't just click that share button. And just because you think, oh, this is sensational news, and I better let all my friends know. Well, if it's fake news, you're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. So think before sharing. Social media makes it easy to react quickly and emotionally to post and to unwittingly share misinformation. Before sharing content, stop for a moment. Take a deep breath. Consider your emotions and your biases. When we share content without first verifying that it's accurate, we all become misinformation agents. And you shouldn't be that way. Escape your bubble. Whatever your beliefs, we share things in common. Confirmation bias. We seek news and accept information because it affirms what we already think. Get a 360-degree understanding of a topic. To challenge 
your beliefs rather than reinforce them. If you watch Fox News, try watching CNN during the day or vice versa. What are the other sides of the story? What are you not hearing? Most issues are not black and white. They fall somewhere in between. But if you're just listening to one side of the story, you're going to hear one side of the story. Breaking news is always full of incomplete news. It can take up to 72 hours before a complete picture is reported. So everything right away, you do have to be skeptical of that, even from the major news sources. News organizations have less fact checkers today on their staff, whether they're TV the newspapers have nobody left in their staff. They just repeat almost anything. Everybody needs to be a doubting Thomas. Uh, so I'm all inviting everybody uh, uh, to be a doubting Thomas whenever you see anything. Okay. Let's, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to uh, stop sharing here if I can get back here. Uh, let me do this. Uh, we'll look in the chat, or let me turn my camera on. If you do have a question, you can uh, unmute your audio and your video, and we can do that. Uh, Evelyn says, I also use a reverse image search whenever I get a friend request or message from somebody I don't know, and that's, that's good. Uh, uh, so just like doing Google searches, checking on things, the image search uh, will tell you uh, possibly where that image uh, was used. I mean, if it was used by other people or uh, gotten, uh, uh, let's say it's a military person that you think you're talking with a commander in the Air Force, and all of a sudden you see, well, it was published in the BA newsletter. Well, that's where a scammer got it. That's where fake news got it. Uh, that's that's where some of the stuff got. So. It's always good to check uh, where stuff was located there. Okay, questions, comments? Everyone's so quiet there. Well, it's very, very good stuff, Tom. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. No, well, to, again, I if you, if you do anything uh, anywhere, you're we're all exposed to this, uh, whether it's uh, in uh, printed materials or uh, uh, links or people send stuff, the email around, and uh, it's easy for everyone to get caught up in it and and not understand that. Well, are you are you going to be part of the solution or part of the problem there and and checking some of these things out before you uh, send it along. Or what I'll do too uh, is if I find something that's false uh, in somebody's post, a friend of mine, I kindly, again, kindly uh, will post out there and post uh, uh, links to uh, fact checkers or to image searches to report on the truth there. Yeah, good. I knew of some of these sites, but not all of them. So, so thanks. And and I get a kick. I I have a, a friend of mine uh, that uh, we have numerous discussions on uh, political and that, and and uh, his deal is, uh, and you see it on both the left and the right. Fake media, the fake media out there is reporting this or reporting that, and and when I challenge him and say, well, you know. Uh, what do you think the truth is, or where is the truth there? Uh, he usually can't come up with the the truth there, and uh, uh, so it's it's this case, or he's trying to reference articles or uh, things like that, which come from obscure places, obscure obscure websites, and carry no truth whatsoever there. Say, hey, Tom, this is John Stofko. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, I think your your suggestion, if you if you continuously watch Fox News, 
switch to the other side and just see what the differences are. Uh, I mean, I, I think like Fox News and MSNBC are big opposites. I think it's really good to look, listen to something like the BBC or, or you know, read in the Wall Street Journal or, or New York Times because there's very different sorts of opinions. And they are really just opinions, not so much news. Yeah, the the discussion I'll have uh, with some of the people that I have is you have to look at whether it's a newspaper or whether it's a TV station or news in general. The news is not there to report unbiased information. The, the newspaper is there to sell newspapers. The magazine's there to sell magazines. The TV station is there to have viewers. Well, if the if the viewers that it wants are let's say on the on uh, the left, uh, it's going to report on news that keeps the left happy. It's not going to report on news about the right. Uh, so it it really is this case of it, you know like like John said, and I think I mentioned it in the tip there. You know, uh, uh, do this lateral lateral checking, uh, go to other sources that you don't normally go to there uh, that typically report. Fox is right wing. Microsoft NBC is left wing. Uh, if all you see is one, one of these, you are not getting an unbiased view of what the news really is. And frequently the news is somewhere in between. Uh, so it it really is a case of of doing doing your due diligence and understanding some of these things and understanding that uh, the news again if let's say it's Microsoft uh, and uh, MSNBC uh, reporting there well Microsoft uh, my uh, MSNBC knows that if it started promoting let's say things that uh, Kamala was doing bad that. Uh, uh, they'd lose viewers. Viewers would switch away from them. So they continue to hide or show one side of uh, information and not showing necessarily the whole picture. And that's true of the other side. Fox is just going to say Trump's perfect and everything everything he does is perfect. Well, we know that that's not true and the other extreme isn't true. The truth is somewhere in between. And so if you are getting it from multiple sources and, and understanding the source that you're seeing, we all can make better decisions there. Okay. So this is John again. I, you know, it's kind of interesting. You talk about manipulated images, but sometimes images are really true, especially in different commercials for political purposes. They'll show a, an opposing candidate with a really angry look on his or her face. And if you go to the other side, it, they'll use the other one. They're true images. They just happen to pick something that makes the person look bad. Right. Um, so I, I think you need to, like you say, you really need to use a little bit of discretion upon what you believe. Yeah. And you're biased. Everybody's got biases. <laughs> And, and yes, and that's uh, that's uh, uh, again I in the in the presentation and in my research there it, you see bias all over the place and uh, and rightfully so websites that you go out to want you to keep coming back to their website so they're going to cater to a certain bias news sites are going to cater to a certain bias uh, newspapers even cater to a certain bias. Uh, so it, it really is this case of you have to kind of use your thinking cap, use that uh, uh, mind up there to to go through. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in order to uh, fight your own uh, biases, you, you, uh, you can ask yourself, why do, I, why do you, I believe what I believe? Or you could ask uh, other people that, too, I suppose, uh, gently. <laughs> Why do you believe what you believe? Yeah, and and, you, yeah. and and we see it all over. I mentioned like the hurricane and that, and uh, there's people trying to sensationalize certain uh, 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 pictures or responses, and and again the FEMA response. 
it isn't it isn't the greatest response in the world and it isn't the worst response in the world it's somewhere in between but if all you listen to is one side of it you're you're not getting the full picture of what's going on so it really is a case of kind of understanding you know where this came from what audience they're catering to uh and these algorithms that are used if you're uh, on facebook or twitter or instagram uh the algorithms go through and they kn they know what biased you are on the on your past viewing what you did and what you looked at how long you spent on a certain article or or clicked on a news site or things like that they have all that logged so you're going to continue to get one side of the story you're not getting necessarily the other side of the story and uh, for us to be really objective you really do have to understand the big picture there Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, I see the question or, uh, from Evelyn there. Uh, is the meeting recorder available to folks uh, not as members of the PC? Yeah, when I post it out to the PC Club website, both the handouts and the video and the entire PC Club website is open to anybody in the world. Uh, so if you want to send them a link or, or that, you can create a link or send them to the page and... Uh, but yeah, the recording of this and the handouts and any of the past handouts and, and that's out there. You don't have to put in a user ID. You don't have to put in a password. It's available. It's available out there. Yeah, and I guess I see Jim just answered that too. So yeah, we purposely don't lock it down uh, to just PC Club members. And we purposely try and stay away from... Uh, we aren't sharing uh, 3M company secrets on here or uh, showing uh, the labs and what they're doing. Uh, uh, so uh, we, uh, we purposely will put or uh, structure, structure the information and that not to reference the internal 3M uh, websites or, or things like that. Okay, any other questions or comments? And, and you're all welcome to be a Doubting Thomas. Uh, and uh, if you haven't used some of these sites before for checking uh, news or even uh, searching for like articles or the reverse image searches, they can be very powerful and, and help you uh, determine some of these things. Because, uh, uh, you know, I've seen pictures of, uh, of uh, manipulated uh, photos of uh, people saying, well, we had... Uh, uh, this type of electric car back in the 1900. Well, there were electric cars back in the 1900. They weren't the ones, some of the images that you see. Those are manipulated images uh, that a, a person created. Again, could be a game, could be they just want to get clicks, they want to see how many people share it, uh, how far around the world it goes. Because if you're not familiar on Facebook, uh, when you share uh, or uh, somebody shares what you have, you can get statistics on how many people have shared, where it's been, how many views, who's looked at it, things like that. So it's a game, especially to high school kids and uh, somebody who maybe has uh, too much knowledge uh, on their, uh, uh, too much time and uh, knowledge uh, to, to see what they can do. So uh, some, some uh, websites, It'll say, uh, okay, let's see uh, who can get the most clicks in the next uh, na next 24 hours. So you create anything. Cryptocurrency is uh, doing this or that, and you see how many people share it and what they do. Uh, so it, a lot of games going on out there. And it's not just the Russian government or the Chinese government. Most of this stuff is kids or people trying to manipulate other people. Hey, Tom, it's Mitch again. The uh, uh, Owen Magnetic from 1926 or something was an uh, electric car. Uh, I had uh, regenerative brakes and uh, uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, just like the Prius. Uh, you can go to, like, Jay Leno's garage. He's got one of these. It's really amazing what they did a century ago. Yeah, 
Yeah, and they're they're you know certainly that's where that's where uh, you know don't just trust something that you see on a social feed. If you go out and check some of these other sources, then you get the real facts on in this case electric yeah. cars or or what sure. they actually had and uh, things like that. But I'll see uh, uh, some feeds where it'll show a design of an automobile, and that's I, I can tell. That it was an AI was used to generate that. It was not a 1900 photograph uh, <laughs> of it. So, <laughs> right. Okay. Any other? Tom, this is, no, go ahead. This is John Stockton. I think uh, you know it used to be to create these sorts of fake images or fake news it was not that easy to do, but with AI now. I mean, I, I don't know all the things that you can do with it, but there's a lot that you have to be skeptical of. I mean, seeing is not believing anymore. Well, the, the like I like I said in the in the days past, uh, you had to be uh, to manipulate a photograph. You had to be knowledgeable on a package like Adobe Photoshop, and it could take you hours to do uh, that same thing that would have taken me hours or even a day to do. Uh, 10 years ago, I can do in seconds. Uh, so I showed Chuck and the weed and stuff like that. Another example is my brother uh, uh, lives in outstate Minnesota, and he had sent a beautiful picture from his front yard uh, where there was a deer and a heron in his front yard, and he has a bridge over a stream. Beautiful picture of, of the heron and, and uh, the bird there. Well, I immediately took that, just like I did with Chuck's. Uh, I went out to this site, uh, Canva. Uh, I'll give them a plug, C-A-N-V-A. Uh, and it was free. Now they're, I think as of the 24th of this month, they're going to charge for some of their uh, AI-generated features. But right now it was free. Uh, I went out there. I used the mouse to brush out an area. So I brushed out an area in the picture just with the mouse. And then I went over and you type what kind of image or what do you want in there? So I put Bigfoot and I had it generate a Bigfoot image and then size it and blend it into the picture. And again, if, uh, if, if, you, if you didn't know that Bigfoot shouldn't be there, you'd assume if I had put a raccoon in there or something, you would have assumed that he got all three of those. But because I put Bigfoot in there, a logical person should have said, I think he manipulated the picture a little bit. But it's that easy to do. And less than a minute, less than a minute, probably closer to 30 seconds, that's how much time I spent to manipulate that image. It's, it's, it's incredible and it's nice and uh, it can be used for good things. So, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm using it as a joke and uh, things like that. But if you want to take out things or you want to uh, put other uh, things in there or I'm creating a presentation for PowerPoint, I can uh, I can uh, easily create things that may not have been created before. And uh, I might have had to have hired a graphic artist or somebody to do something. Now it can be done in seconds for virtually free. Okay. If you do have any other questions, uh, you know, join us on the question and answer, or you can send me a note there. Uh, uh, but again, be that doubting Thomas, uh, and uh, uh, keep your eyes and ears open, because uh, unfortunately, on the internet, there's a lot of fake news and uh, fake things there. So thanks for joining. Thanks, Tom. Um, yep. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too.